Good morning, good morning, good morning. Happy Friday. I'm Diego and welcome to my garden on an actually pretty chilly 30-ish degree California morning. Today we're following up on these cover cropped beds that had mustard in them. About a month ago, I harvested all the tops from these mustard plants. The goal was to compost the tops and hopefully let the bottoms that you see behind me grow back. Well, the bottoms, they're just not growing back. I'm wasting time here. So today we're gonna to try and handle those bottoms and compost them in place. Dude, what you did didn't work. Come on, man, you're such a failure. It didn't work. Initially when I harvested all this mustard, I thought I could harvest the tops, leaving six to eight inches above ground in place, thinking that it would grow back. Well, Spoiler alert, it hasn't grown back at all. It's just kind of sitting here. And I'm wasting a lot of time just having these beds do nothing. So today we're gonna to try and compost all of the residue in place using tarps. That's the TLDR version of this. I'm gonna try and go through a unique way of knocking all this cover crop down so the tarps can lay flat and hopefully turn this stuff into some sort of usable soil that plants can later grow into. Today we're gonna to be using tarps to compost all of this residue in place. Why tarps? I like tarps because they're super cheap and they're extremely passive. You don't have to do anything except put them down and then just let nature do the work. Thick dark black tarps keep moisture in and they keep light out. So anything under them smothers and dies and the worms eat them and you end up with really good soil. The problem with all this stubble though left on the ground is you can't just put a tarp over this. The tarp is gonna be all bridged up and bunched up. It's not gonna lay flat. If wind comes along, it's gonna blow it. You gotta put a whole bunch of rocks on it. I don't wanna go through all that trouble. So I'm gonna try and knock this down with a tool that I made. I don't know if it's gonna work, but hey, we'll try it and then put the tarp on. Dude, you should use a scythe on this. A scythe would be amazing. But I don't have a scythe. I can't use a scythe if I don't have one. I know, but you should just use a scythe. It would be so epic. Hey, this is a uh, maker show, kind of. We you know, we like to make things, DIY it up occasionally, not just buy everything. Well, here's something you can't buy because nobody would make any money selling it. This is the cover crop plow sled. It's a sled that pulls rocks and it plows down cover crops in the process. Many years ago, I grew up in upstate New York, believe it or not, and I used to love sledding in the winter. And one thing I remember from that sledding is you could sit in the sled, have somebody pull you, and you plow a path through the snow and everything in front of you gets compressed. We're gonna use that same principle today using this sled, which is just a simple piece of scrap board with a rope on it. We're gonna put some rocks on this and we're just gonna go up and down, back and forth across the road to try and bend over, crimp, break all these stalks and get them to just lay flat enough to put the tarp onto. Somebody's gonna say, dude, is that gonna compress your beds? You're gonna just ruin your soil structure. Well, dude, bro, I don't think this is gonna ruin my soil structure. I think the weight is distributed enough. And you know, really in nature, soil isn't just light and fluffy. Any forest, any meadow, animals walk on it. Soil settles after it rains, after snow falls. Like this fluffy soil thing, it, I think it's kind of a myth. All the soil doesn't have to be fluffy. But I love fluffy, man. Like fluffy's a great name for a cat too. It might be a great name for a cat, but I'm not so sure your soil should always be that way. Don't feel bad about walking on it. All right, step number one, voila, the sled is primed and ready. We put a nice heavy paver stone on, and then we add a second nice heavy paver stone. Next step is pull her away. All aboard, here we go. So production note, how did that look on film? Uh, I think it looks pretty good. 
How did that work? Uh, I'm not totally sure. I heard a lot of crunching and cracking like stems were snapping, and I think it's gonna work. One thing you could do in place of this is you could use the scythe like Dude Bro suggested. You could use a string trimmer. And I actually thought about using a string trimmer, but it's 6.30 in the morning right now, and I don't think my neighbors would appreciate that. But I also, one thing I don't like about a string trimmer is that it sends the scraps everywhere. That whirly motion of the string wants to shoot everything outward. I wanna try and keep this contained. I wanna try and keep the material on the beds. I put all this wood chips in the pathway. I don't wanna get a bunch of biomass on those. I mean, if they break down, they break down. If biomass gets on there, I'm not actually that picky. I don't care that much. But I do wanna try and keep the green biomass on the beds where more greenery will be growing in the future so I can compost it in place. That's what this, the goal of this sled is to do, is to knock it down so we can tarp it. You could use a mower, I think, a mulching mower, maybe. Um, I have drip line on here, I'd have to pull that up, so that wouldn't really work, but I could see in the right situation, a mulching mower might handle this, might be a good idea. A flail mower, if you had that, I don't even have a tiller anymore, so that's not an option, and again, you'd have to pull up the drip line. So I think this DIY sled is gonna work. Now, let's just uh, make a few more passes and try and knock this down a little bit more. Morning exercise. <laughs> That's it. I'm going to call that bed done. They're kind of maybe now, like a bed. How does it look? Star. It looks okay. I mean, they're, they're showing still some size, stocks, standing, but, they're not but I think fully they've erect. been crimped. I think they're going to fall um, over when the tarp can I say that? gets put Is on top. Okay? Now that this bed's done, we'll move on to that bed. There we have it, two beds down. Results, eh, not as good as I would have liked. I don't think the sled's really heavy enough to take down some of the big stalks. Some of the big stalks are pretty resilient. They're like Dolph Lundgren in the Rocky movie. Like they just don't want to go down. You keep hitting them, but they keep standing until the very end. Spoiler alert. But this is like a one minute tool that I just used some scraps to make. So given that, we're gonna let it ride. Next step is to put some tarps over these beds. I'm gonna make sure I tarp all the bed. The path on that side, the path in the middle, the path on this side. Not just the beds themselves, the pathways too. I've made this mistake in the past trying to just tarp the beds and I get plants that leak out the side of the tarp and start growing. I'm blanketing this whole area. If the wood chips under the tarps break down in the process, so be it, I mean, that's why they're there. But I am gonna cover all of this. Another advantage of this tarps and what I'm doing here is this is a great weed control, control strategy. Since this mustard hasn't regenerated, there's been a lot of room for weeds to come in here and establish themselves, big nettle problem. So these tarps are gonna take out all the nettle and any weeds in these beds while it takes out the mustard. I may end up walking on the tarps once I put them on, but I'm a little worried that stalks might punch through the tarps. We'll see what that looks like. For tarps today, I'm using billboard tarps. I really love billboard tarps because they're thick, they're UV treated, you can cut them down to size, the edges don't fray, so I am billboard tarps all the way. Next up, lay it out over the paths and the beds. These tarps are cut to bed width, they're slightly wider, so I'm gonna have to use several to just layer on top of each other, and I'm gonna try and do it in such a way that the wind that comes from this way is going to blow over the top of them all. So I'm gonna start on this side and layer over going that way to make a shell that's more impervious to wind. There we have it, all the tarps are laid. So far, so good. I think it looks okay. It's a little lumpy, bumpy action, but once everything starts to rot and break down, it's just all gonna collapse like a house of cards onto itself. I'm not too worried about that. I'm gonna now cover this up with some stones to help weight it down to keep these tarps in place when the wind comes. I'm not gonna show you that. That's, you know how to do that. That's the easy part. A couple things I am curious about in all of this. What's the net benefit to doing this? 
Like what happens to all that biomass that is above surface? And what happens to the soil at surface when all this breaks down? Let's go inside and talk about that. Now we're out of the cold, we are inside. The topic I want to explore is chop and drop. What happens when you chop down a cover crop, let it drop and walk away? Have you ever thought about that? What's actually happening to that biomass on surface? Now in nature, you could think, well, that's how soils are built. If we look at the Great Plains and how herds of roaming animals like bison built the topsoil on the plains, this is kind of what happened. They came across the plains through all the grasses. They ate some, they trampled some, they pooped some, and they left some standing that reseeded itself. Over many hundreds and thousands of years, all that organic matter began to accumulate and build up. So how does that translate to cover crops? Can we do the same thing with the chop and drop method? Maybe. If you are a large scale farmer doing cover cropping, you're going to chop your cover crop, leave it on ground, and then you're gonna no-till drill into that cover. And if you do that season over season, leaving all the residue on surface, eventually you're gonna to start to build a nice mat of organic matter that's gonna you know, kind of start laying like pickup sticks over the surface, protecting the soil surface. As that organic matter builds up, then slowly the bottom side of that organic matter starts getting digested into the soil and it becomes soil and you work up from there. But is that what you're doing in a garden with cover crops? Maybe, but a lot of people raising cover crops, they aren't doing it that way. They're chopping and then they need a relatively clean seed bed to plant into. So they either rake that cover crop off or remove the cover crop and compost it. That's what I'm doing. Or a lot of people will just terminate that cover crop in place by mowing it down with a flail mower, a mower, a string trimmer. Well, what's happening to all that material on top? Where is it going? Is it going into the soil or is it going into the sky? I think a lot of it is actually going into the sky. And I think you're wasting a lot of organic matter by just dropping it on a bed and leaving it. And you're also chopping usually 100% of the cover crop. So there's nothing left standing. You just have this bed of flat chop. I think that oxidizes off breaks down very quickly and you're not left with very much to actually go into the soil. Think about just a single example, one plant. If you take one plant, a corn stalk, and you chop it off at the ground and you go set it on some soil, what's going to happen to that? Where does it go? How much of the minerals and nutrients in that corn stalk make their way to the soil and how much of that turns into humus? that we like to call topsoil. I don't think very much does. I mean, the nutrients are going to stay. The stuff that cannot volatilize off in the form of CO2, CH4, CO, those types of gases are going to stay. Like there's core minerals that will break down the ash, if you will. Like if you burn the plant, there's going to be some solid left. Well, that's what's going to end up in the soil. So you're mineralizing the soil over a long period of time by just letting that corn stalk sit there. But a lot of us, we want to increase the organic matter in our soil. That corn stalk sitting on top, is it increasing the organic matter? Is that corn stalk breaking down into a more stable form of organic matter, humus? Yeah, I don't think it is. I think it's desiccating in a lot of cases, drying, and maybe some of it makes its way to the soil. If you think about cover crops that you chop and drop and leave on surface or flail mow on surface, how are their nutrients getting, how are they turning into humus, organic matter in the soil? You need to press it into the soil to get some sort of composting action because there's really only gonna be composting action at the very bottom of the pile. You see this in your compost pile. The outer edge left unprotected to the elements dries out and just kind of desiccates. It doesn't compost. The center of the compost pile, the bottom of the compost pile is what breaks down the best and the most. 
So if you have this layer of organic matter across the top of your bed, well, you're gonna get some digestion at the bottom, but the top is just gonna kind of dry out and go away or burn off as all that nitrogen, because usually there's not a lot of carbon in the form of cover crops. When you chop it, it's pure nitrogen. It's just gone, goodbye, up to the sky. Now, maybe some organic elements within the soil, the microbiology are coming up to surface to nibble on that and you're getting an increased amount of microbiology near the soil surface due to this mulching effect and they're eating and they're pooping and the sheer migration of microbiology to the surface from this mulching of cover crop is increasing organic matter that way. So it's not the plants that are adding to organic matter, it's all the microbiology that's up there pooping and eating and eating itself and killing each other and dying off. They are adding the organic matter to the soil. And there's worms going up and getting it and going back down and pooping. So you're introducing it that way. But the stuff just on the surface, I don't know. That's why I really question this. Like when I pull up the tarp that I just put down, is that soil gonna be better off because the organic matter was there that composted the stalks of the mustard? Now the soil's gonna look really good. We're gonna see all sorts of worms and roly polies and things like that at soil surface. It's gonna be super moist. Moist soil always looks better than dry soil. It will look great when you pull the tarp off, but that's more an effect of the tarp rather than the organic matter that is being composted in the process. So I'm gonna to have to be careful here to say, what are the effects due to tarp and what are the effects due to the organic matter trapped between the soil surface and the tarp? And I don't know how much that's adding. That's the big unknown here. That's why I'm making a lot of effort and putting time into harvesting the above ground portion of these cover crops and composting them in another place to try and get as much of that biomass to convert into compost as possible. Concentrating it together in a controlled managed system to help it break down in a pile in a way that I can reasonably predict the results. If I just chop and drop it or flail mow it and mow it down and walk away, I don't really know what's getting added to the soil. What have been your experiences with this? When you chop and drop a single cover crop, is it building soil? Do you think it is? It's different than the Great Plains. It's different than that oak tree that drops its leaves year after year and you build this soil under oak trees because the, the, the mass of organic matter is never going away. Leaves are piling on top of leaves on top of leaves. That's not what we really have in a garden situation, at least how I'm treating it. I'm not chopping a cover crop and then direct planting into it. You could do that but I think you'd have bug issues and maybe some other issues, smell issues for sure, if you're growing things like mustard. But that would be one strategy to maybe get a better effect. You grow your own mulch in place. You grow the cover crop, you chop it, just plant into it. But then the question becomes, how do you get another cover crop in there through all that mulch? You're gonna have to transplant it by hand. There's no no-till seed drill for the small scale. So that's not gonna work. Now, one thing I could look back and say is, well, why don't I just leave the stalks standing, just plant around them? I could, totally. Just leave the stalks there, plant tomatoes and stuff around them. The stalks will eventually fall over, break down in place, and they'll go away. The problem I have doing that is, that's a long process. I'm, I'm not getting any net benefit in the meantime. That soil surface is drying out. The microbiology then goes away near the soil surface as it dries out. I don't want to irrigate it this time of year if there's no plants in it. At least if I tarp it, I can control weeds because there's no light. There's nowhere for the weeds to germinate without the light. And it keeps that soil surface moist and protected from the sun. So there is a benefit to putting the tarp down but that's the tarp, not those stalks. Those are some of my thoughts on breaking down this above ground residue with cover crops. I may later in the year try to do a side-by-side -side bed experiment where I look at a, f a couple bed cases. Maybe one is we just chop the cover crop down in place and we walk away, we don't do anything. What does that look like? Maybe one is then we chop it and we tarp it 
So we take the sun out of it, we preserve the moisture. And then another one is we harvest the crop from that bed above ground and we compost that externally at a different place, stabilize all that organic matter in the form of compost, end up with some unit of compost, and then see what we have. The nice thing about making compost is you can selectively put it wherever you want. Composting in place is obviously going to be applied evenly or as evenly as the crop residue is distributed. Something I'm thinking of here, it's one of the things that has always kind of bothered me around chop and drop and gardening about just mowing down a cover crop in a garden situation. Are you wasting some of your efforts? Is there actually a net benefit? I don't know. Let me know your thoughts. Leave a comment below. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video and share my gardening experience with you in your life. I think that came out right. Stay tuned next week for another gardening video from here in Southern California. Thanks for watching everybody. Until next time, be nice, be thankful, and do the work.